Where Christ Jesus will reign supreme Where love and peace will ever be Where grace and truth will find no place Give us a home, give us a peace Give us a place where Christ will reign Give us a home, give us a peace Give us a place where Christ will reign You are listening to Praying Parent Prayer Group 3PG Family Radio Broadcast at 3PG, we are committed to helping parents take spiritual responsibility for the overall welfare of their children. We hope this episode is a blessing to your family. Here is your host, Olumafin Kende Benjamin. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Thank you for how you'll be helping us since the beginning of this new series. Thank you for the daily revelations you are giving to us as a group. Thank you for your mercy and love over our lives. Thank you for exposing the secret of the wicked and for making sure our family is not exposed to the attack of the enemy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. Is there any sick among us? Father, please serve forth your hand. Heal and make whole in Jesus' name. Pray for our children. Make them strong in faith and in body and in health. In Jesus' name, pray for marriages and for families. Please bless our home, bless our marriages. Make us the best you can be in your hand. Help us to walk with you and to love you above all else in the mighty name of Jesus. In this episode today, speak to our heart, minister to our head, and bless our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In this edition, shall we continue on our series, Seven Sheep Ways. The devil attacks the family. Seven sheep ways. The devil attacks the family. And today, episode two, we consider division, discord, and disagreement in marriage. As a sheep way, the devil attacks the family. And our text is taken from Mark 3, 24 to 27. Mark chapter 3, from verse 24 to 27. And verse 24 says, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, it cannot stand, but has an end. No man can enter, verse 27, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind a strong man and then he will spoil his house. It started in the first episode to highlight one by one seven different areas where the enemy's relationship attack against the family with alignment success that can be checkmated if more married couples in defense of their families will arise and say no to the invading armies of hell that are get crashing very cheaply into homes and very subtly into family with heartbreaking results. And in the last episode, our focus was on dominant domestic disinformation. They are dominant because they are popular and forcefully deceptive ideas that are sown to marriages and into homes and families of which we must place close attention and stop them in their track before they have a grant in our own house. They always appear beneficial and liberty at the first, but on a closer look, more are often revealed than meet the eye. In the last episode, we defined this information as misleading information or idea that are spread deliberately to deceive. All this information rocking the family boat are from the enemy. Satan, the devil, the chief enemy of family, and the senior apostle warn us lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices in our test last week. We said in that episode that knowledge is increasing. New ideas and sciences are springing up, and with them are silent deceptions that are wired with latent intelligence and are sold into homes and families by the enemies of the cross who occupy lofty positions in government and all human societies in exchange for peace, long-lasting relationship, and ultimately set couples against each other and unwillingly against their own children and even against God. 
in the last episode, we mentioned some of the disinformation that are gaining very dangerous access into home and families to include the doctrine of equal rights in marriage, championed by people who themselves are plagued with failed marriages and people who see Bible position and order of marriage as a form of slavery that seeks to put women in perpetual bondage, archaic, unrealistic, and in need of urgent reform, and they set out to reform the scriptures. We said this idea is satanic doctrine promoted by people who themselves have no marriage to protect, gender confusionists who engage in same-sex marriages and relationships, people with perverted definition of family who are sworn enemies of the cross of Christ. We said equality cannot be reached in marriage, no matter how much we try, but equity with fairness and love is very much possible. The man should treat his wife like a lover, respect her and love the children, then leave the rest for her and see if by God's grace she won't do her part. Same-sex marriages, continuous legislations by organs of government at redefining the nuclear family from the traditional definition of a man, his wife, and children are also disinformation powered by the spirit of rebellion waging against homes and families. We saw rebellion as a ship weapon the enemy is using to set married couples against each other and against their own children and ultimately against God. We said rebellion will not work where there is no pride and stubbornness, where humility is absent and the brain works independently of the heart and grace is overshadowed by self, pride will not be scarce. And lastly, in that episode last week, we said another terrible domestic deception that is subtly creeping into homes and family, which is not sparing even Christian marriages, is a syndrome that says he who owns the money rules the house. We said it is chief reason behind unhealthy pursuit of money and the need to make more money, which is more like competitions among couples. Since it's believed the person making the bigger money always had the finances on family matter. Availability of money or its absence or who among the two has more is killing marriages silently and very fast. Once it's easy to make more money is selfishly personal and not family oriented, the negative control and manipulative tendency aimed at subjugating one spouse cannot be ruled out. That was where we stopped in the last episode. And in this second episode, another ship way the enemy is attacking the family, which is the second of such which shall be considering under this title, is division, discord, and disagreement in marriage. This is one ship way the enemy is attacking families today. Division, discord, and disagreement. In the first one last week, we said dominant domestic disinformation. Today, it is division, discord, and disagreement. In our text, the Lord said, if a kingdom, a family, a marriage be divided against itself, it cannot stand. And if a house, maybe a family or a marriage be divided against itself, that union, that house cannot stand. But it surely come to an end. No man can enter into a strong man house, into a family, into a marriage, and spoil the family and destroy the home and say we first of all bind the strong man and in this case cause division, discourse and disagreement in the family or in the marriage and by so doing bind their hands spiritually they can't fight united front again and then it will spoil that house, it will spoil that marriage, it will destroy that family. Why? Because spiritually they have been dismobile, they have been disarmed and they have been rendered useless. Division, discord, and disagreement are often based on most cases on incomplete understanding, biased knowledge, and parochial view of individuals. I know I am correct, and I can never be wrong attitude, fuel with pride, I ship with the devil attack marriages, homes, and families, including those of believers. Nobody have a perfect idea on any matter. We must see from other person's view sometime to balance your own idea and your own view on a particular subject. Disagreements are inevitable in all human relationships, including marriage and family life. 
there will always be reason for couples to have diverse opinions and disagreement on issues, including very important issues like sex, money, investment opportunities, parenting, and even doctrinal differences on Bible teachings and beliefs may exist in some places, but none of them should be strong enough to cause prolonged discord and division that can lead to bitterness and fragmentation of the family into smaller divisions and opposing camps within the same house. In 1 Corinthians 12, 25, 1 Corinthians 12, 25, the Bible says, There should be no schism, division, break-up, partition, should not be mentioned among you as one body. There should be no schism in the body, but that the members, in this case married couples, a family should have the same care one for another. A couple are united and loving. Children from such home will rarely fall victim of hatred and sibling rivalries. Sibling rivalries and hatred are often a result of division in the house that children themselves have seen in their parents. When parents mind their own business, everybody have a different way and they are going different directions. Children too will learn to grow up facing different way, facing different direction. There will not be sibling unity and family progressive accord facing same direction. Disagreement and unhealthy argument breeds animosity and silent hatred with bitterness in the heart of marriage mate and bitterness will set the ground rule for division and discord commonly referred to at the end of the day as irreconcilable differences when marriage collapses. So if you disagree on every occasion, you argue unethically every other day, on every occasion, on every opportunity you argue, you fight, I'm telling you, you are already laying the ground rule for discord and division and eventually it may end up in what we call irreconcilable differences in the family. How important it is for couples to see this early enough at the start of every argument and nip the seed of darkness in the bud before it gains strength to germinate and multiply. Never strive to win an argument at all costs. If you do, you will leave behind a dejected and defeated spouse who is embittered with revenge and by the time the cycle of revenge and bitterness is complete, the marriage and the children will be the worst it. It is better to win a lover, a friend, and a life partner than to win an argument. The spirit that argue and love to win at all costs is never of Jesus Christ. Rather, it is demonic and selfish. We can never agree on everything, but we should agree on most things. Where this is not so, bitterness of heart and spirit is unavoidable, and the cycle of rebellion is elongated. There will be time you would let your spouse win and let off again, especially we are seeing an unhealthy compromise that can jeopardize your faith and personal health is not the case. Once your health is not affected and your faith is not compromised, please let it go. A marriage that argue on everything and those in need have different idea and opinion on everything will not go far. Such a house will soon be left in the cold, scattered and unhealed. Division, discord and disagreement are one sheep reason behind failure of marriages and family life. Please watch against it that division and discord and disagreement are becoming less and less in your own house. God hates division and discord for where they are present so also will be all kinds of satanic manipulations and evil works. For we are envy and travis, there is confusion and every evil work. James 3 verse 16. James 3 verse 16. Jesus says in Matthew 12 25, Matthew 12 25, he says, Every kingdom, marriages or family, divided against itself, is brought to desolation, empty, wretched, and unhappy. And every city or house, family or marriage, divided against itself, shall not stand. David was a man of valor. He was undefeatable by his numerous enemy. He was practically invisible in battles. And by him, God granted Israel victories over giants and nations mightier and stronger than them. But as mighty as David was, he led behind a family plague with division and rancor that eventually led to more division and death within the household. 
such and things you must wash out at all costs. Now, what are the symptoms of division in a marriage or family? How do I know when my marriage is passing through or about going through the valley of division and discord? How do I know? Number one, when you sit together in a room, but you don't talk to each other as couple, something is wrong. Number two, when you don't seek advice from each other on very important issues, but each mind is our own businesses and take independent decision on issues privately, separately, on, on its or our own, something is wrong. Number three, when lovemaking is reduced to duty, you own each other and not the lively outfit time out between two married lovers. You don't even look forward to it again. Everybody just minding his or her own life. Something is wrong. When you spend more time agreeing than you spend agreeing on matters affecting your children's life and your family. When you spend more time agreeing than you spend on agreeing on issue, something is wrong. There is division already taking place in the family. Number five, when you divide financial responsibilities, especially on matters affecting the children and their welfare. For example, there are homes where once the man pays school fees, the woman must sort out feeding allowance for the period. Not because there is scarcity of fun, but because the man feels he can't be the one doing everything. And same goes for the woman as well. Once you see that in your home, there is division in financial responsibility, not because of scarcity of fun, but because somebody is just being cautious unnecessarily, something is wrong. Number six, when there is silent competitions to outdo each other and have greater control over the other person. When either of the spouse is striving or both of you are striving to be the one in control of the house, then something is wrong. Number seven, when you want to make more money just to compete and silence your spouse's bossy or manipulative attitude. When all you care for is just to make money to silence and keep your spouse from being bossy or manipulating, then something is wrong. There's division in the house. Number eight, when you do things or even make plan or emergency journey without the knowledge of your spouse and you care not how he or she feels about it, then the house is divided. When you can make a planned journey or emergency journey and you just travel and you don't care what your spouse will say, something is wrong. Number nine, when there is financial infidelity and secret investment, division is at its peak. When there is financial infidelity, couples mind their own ways, invest secretly without the knowledge of the other person, division is at its peak already in the house. Number 10, when you are happier outside your matrimonial home and in the company of your friends and colleagues than when you are together at home or in a family outings, something is already missing. When you are happier outside your family than you are when you are with your spouse at home, and that is the reason why many men come very late in the night or not coming at all to the house, and some women too, they stay outside as long as they can just to avoid the house, something is wrong. When you don't attend church together, number 11, when you don't attend church together, and even when you do, you sit post apart, something is wrong. One of the easiest we can know a family where there is division is just look at them on the church on the Sunday service. The wife is sit at the back, the husband is in the front, or vice versa, post apart, or one sit at the extreme right, and under at the extreme left. They don't have anything in common at all. It shows something is wrong from the house. Number 12, when you don't attend children's school programs and occasions together, you always have a reason to be absent for your own children's school program and you are doing nothing to make a difference. Division are setting. Number 13, when you are not proud of your spouse and proudly introduce him or her to your friends during outside or short engagement, you are having division in your house. Number 14, when you stylishly do not want your spouse to know your colleague at work or you are not interested in visiting your spouse's workplaces once a while to be known and identified with your spouse you are doing everything to avoid people in your workplace knowing your spouse or you to get to be to know and to be known in your spouse's workplace then something is wrong number 15 when your financial status and pay package is deliberately shrouded in mysteries to keep your spouse off your financial record and bank statement 
when you deliberately keep your pay package and financial record in secret so that your spouse will not know how much you are worth financially and your bank statement and record are kept secret from your spouse or your family knowing about it, something is wrong, the division in the house. These are many more a symptom of division in a family. Please pray this prayer with me. Father, in your name, I rebuke every agent of division, discord, and disagreement from taking hold upon my marriage and family life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father, in your name, I rebuke every agent of divisions, discord, and disagreement from taking hold upon my marriage and family life. In Jesus' name, whatever it is that is causing disagreement in your home, take note of it and make amen before the house become difficult to amen. May God keep your home safe in this world. May you be blessed with the spirit of wisdom and understanding to keep your family from satanic devices as a society in other homes. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, Amen. If you don't stand to defend your family and keep a home for your children, nobody will. Your children have only one family. Do whatever you can to keep them there. And if it may be the fool to keep the house, at the end, the fool for Jesus and for family's sake, always win. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May God put his name upon your children and bless them. Amen. And may God open your eyes to small, small parts, sheep parts the devil is taking to cause divisions and disagreements in your marriage and in your home. And nip those balls and cover those holes and take away those ground and give your family the peace you deserve and your children deserve. And may you, by the grace of God, keep a family for your children they can be proud of. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. I believe you have been blessed. It's been Praying Parents Prayer Group Christian Ministry, 3PG Radio Broadcast. Join us same time on this same station next week. For prayer, counseling, and inquiry about the group or on today's topic, or to join and participate in our free online prayer conference, 11 p.m. every Tuesday from the comfort of your room, kindly call or send SMS or WhatsApp message to 081-340-16069. 081-340-16069. Or you can visit at Upper Room Counseling Unit, Suite 47, Praise Plaza, beside Rano Filling Station, New Ife Road, Ibadan. You can also email us at 3pgprayingfamilies at gmail.com. And you can also visit our website, www.3pgchristianministry.org for more family-oriented Christian materials that can make you the kind of parent you are called to be. Until next week at 3PG, we are committed to helping parents take spiritual responsibility for the overall welfare of their children.